name is Tara Cunningham Warren. I'm a professor at the School of Law and also a very proud alumnus in the class of 1996. It's my honor to be the Grand Marshal of today's ceremony. To begin the 2024 graduation of the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law, please join me in welcoming the following individuals as they process into Academy Hall. We're led by some of our distinguished alumni who lead the Juris Doctor degree candidate the Faculty in Administration of the School of Law, the President of Detroit Mercy Law Alumni Association, the Vice President, Deans, and Trustees of the University, our distinguished commencement speaker, the Dean of the University of Windsor Faculty of Law, the Dean of the School of Law, and the President of the University and honored guests. Before we begin, I would ask that you please remain seated during the academic procession. And finally, one very important note is that graduation is a formal academic ceremony. The university and the School of Law request that all guests display appropriate respect for the graduates and for our very special graduation ceremony. At this time, we would ask that you please silence all electronic devices.
Good afternoon. Pamela Zerkowski, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs of the University, will begin this afternoon's graduation. So good afternoon, everyone. It is my honor as the Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs to welcome the Class of 2024 School of Law faculty, staff, and administrators President Taylor and members of the individuals who are sitting um, with me here on the stage to the School of Law commencement ceremony. It is indeed a privilege for me to greet you this afternoon and be the first to greet you. Today we gather to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our graduates. You have demonstrated excellence in your academics, leadership, and service. Your support for your student colleagues and tireless work with the faculty and staff at the School of Law reflects your character and your drive. Your strength, resilience, and academic success during the last three years indicate the exceptional individual you are and the lawyer you will be in your professional career. We are excited to see what the future holds for you. We know you will continue to do great things and wish you all the best in your future endeavors. To our graduates, as you embark on this new chapter, armed with knowledge and a commitment to justice, Remember the values of compassion and service instilled by this Jesuit Mercy Institution. To our faculty and staff, your guidance and expertise have shaped the minds and hearts of future legal professionals, and we thank you for your dedication and service. To our guests and dignitaries and family members and children and spouses and partners, your presence underscores the significance of this occasion, and we are grateful for your support. As we begin this joyous celebration this afternoon, I would be remiss if I did not note that this is Dean Jelani Jefferson Exum's last commencement ceremony as the Dean of the School of Law. Her leadership has left an indelible mark on our institution. Her unwavering commitments to academic excellence, dedication to the values of this Jesuit Mercy Institution, and profound impact on the lives of our students and faculty and staff alike have left a lasting mark on our community. Dean Exum, we express our deepest gratitude for your exemplary service and we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Please join me in giving her a round of applause. I could say more, but this is about them. So congratulations to the class of 2024 on your well-deserved success. Carry forth the legacy of the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law with courage and integrity. Thank you. Thank you, Provost Zarkowski. Father Charles Ojike, Vice President for Mission Integration, will now give the invitation. Peace. Salam alaikum, om shanti, shalom. Because we are a diverse and inclusive community, I invite you to join in offering the invocation in the language of the faith tradition that best speaks to your heart. Let us pray. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Almighty and Eternal God, you who has been revealed to us through the variety of languages and faith traditions of members of the Detroit Mercy family. We invoke your holy name in blessing and gratitude on the graduates of class of 2024. Bless their families and sponsors, bless our faculty, staff, and administrators, and all who have accompanied these graduates throughout their academic journey. Bless our alumni and alumni, both living and deceased, and all those who give of themselves and their resources to make the Jesuit Mercy Catholic mission of our university possible. Creator God, mother and father of us all, we hold in our hearts the victims of violence and conflicts in our world particularly in the Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, Sudan, and South America. Heal our planet, Mother Earth, from climate change 
and show us the way to a hopeful future. Dear God, today as we mission and send forth our law school graduates, inspire them to constantly seek a path that leads to fairness and justice, promotes reconciliation and peace, builds bridges, addresses the root causes of conflict, and help create an equitable, inclusive climate for all people and creatures to thrive and succeed. Oh yes, indeed, for the wonder of the earth, for our mothers and achievements of class of 2024, we thank thee, O oh God. Mutus gracias. Alhamdulillah, shalom, om shanti, shalom. In your holy name we pray, amen. Thank you so much, Father O'Deacon. I would invite you all to now please stand and join our alumna, Claire Zawicki, in singing the national anthems of both Canada and the United States of America. be seated. At this time, I invite you to join me in welcoming 
are Dean and Philip J. McElroy Professor of Law, Jelani Jefferson Axum. Good evening, and well, or good afternoon, and welcome again to the graduation ceremony for Detroit Mercy Law Class of 2024. We are so pleased to have with us President Donald Taylor, Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Pamela Zarkowski, Dean Reen Boddy of University of Windsor Law School with whom we partner in our Canadian and American Dual JD program. Members of the Board of Trustees, the Law Alumni Association, the Association of Black Law Alumni, and other distinguished guests. And of course, we're especially happy to have with us the family and friends of our graduates. Graduates, class of 2024, we are all here to celebrate you. You're a class that has a very special place in my heart, as I hope you know. Most of you started in 2021, and I remember standing before you that first week during your orientation, welcoming you to embark on your new journey, law school. I was also embarking on a new journey because as you were starting your first year of law school, I was starting my first year as dean. We shared a lot of the same emotions then, a bit nervous, perhaps wondering what we'd gotten ourselves into, all while being excited about what lay ahead. You may remember that we were also all wearing masks at the time to protect, to protect us from the lingering pandemic. So if you think about it, we really have all come a very, very long way. I took a look at the speech that I'd given at your orientation, and when I addressed you then, I told you that even though it was my first year as dean, I joined the Detroit Mercy Law faculty in 2019, so I'd gotten to know the place a bit. I assured you that you were joining a community that would challenge you in the best ways, but that would also support you because we all wanted to see you succeed. I hope that you found that your time at Detroit Mercy Law has been just that, an intellectually challenging journey, but one that has given you support as well. I also told you back then that you'd learn a lot about yourself and begin to decide where you'll fit in and what your role will be in the legal profession. I told you that you'd learn about the law's weaknesses and also its promises. And at the time, and I'll remind you again, I mentioned that the university, the law school, and the Metro Detroit area sits on the traditional lands and territory of the Anishinaabe people, also known as the Three Fires of the Confederacy, comprised of the Ojibwe, the Odawa, and the Potawatomi. I noted that fact, saying that you would acquire the tools to right the wrongs that we see all around us. And I explained that at Detroit Mercy Law, when we say that we educate the complete lawyer, we mean that we understand that lawyering is more than simply representing clients on various matters. Lawyers shape society, lawyers aid, lawyers are catalysts for change, lawyers are lifelines, community servants, problem solvers, systems builders, rights protectors, voice amplifiers. And I mentioned that you would get the tools at our school to do all of those things. Well, we, your professors, administrators, staff, families, everyone here really, we've all watched you become all of those things in so many ways. From your growth in your classes to your leadership in creating new student organizations, the panels and programs that you've organized and otherwise supported, your service to clients in clinics and externships, you have all shown yourselves ready to emerge as complete lawyers. But I know that the journey to get to this point hasn't been easy. Your first year of law school was a hybrid one with a mix of in-person and online classes and the fatigue of a pandemic that lasted too long hanging over all of us. And even without that challenge, law school was difficult. So I knew that along the way, there would be moments when you might feel unsure about your path. So you may remember, thinking back, that at orientation, I shared with you ad the advice that I'd gotten and that I actually was also giving to myself at the time, that as we embarked on this new stage in our lives, that sometimes you would have to encourage yourself and remind yourself of why you were doing all of this. And so you each had an index card, and I asked you to take a moment to write down your reason for being in law school, the deeper why, a reason that reflects what truly motivates you. I asked you to tuck that note away somewhere safe or put it on your wall or take a picture of it, some way to save it for the next few years so that you would have something to look at if you hit a tough spot. And then I said, and I quote, but really, hold on to it 
because when you make it through and get to graduation, I just may ask who still has theirs. And I kept my promise and I did just that. So I recently put out a call to see who still had their note cards and to get your reflections on them. Okay, so now I know that some of you do not have your note cards. For some of you, you're carrying what you wrote in your hearts because you have no idea where those cards are. And that's okay, because I believe there was still some value to going through the exercise of thinking about your motivation. But others of you do still have yours. You've, I've really enjoyed the note cards that you've shared with me and your reflections on what you thought then and what you think now. For some of you, finding the note cards was like an act of divine intervention. One of you said, I can't believe I found it. I was moving around some boxes to start moving and it just appeared. Others of you have intentionally kept your note card safe. One submission said, I kept my note card in my pencil case since the day I wrote it. That way I could see it every single day as I attended class or do my homework. It was a constant reminder that I belong in law school and that I'm meant to become an attorney. I've run into a few of you in the halls and you've told me that you still look at your note card from time to time. So whether you still have your note card or not, what's most important is that you have come to feel comfortable about your why. Because you all will still need to hold on to that important piece of yourself as you take this next step in your career. According to your note cards, for some of you, your why was so that you could be a voice for those whose voices are silenced by systems. Others wrote about social mobility and being able to provide for your family or honoring the sacrifices that your parents, grandparents, or other family members made for you. All beautiful sources of motivation that will carry you through the twists and turns of your career. For me, you all have been a very important part of my why. And I suspect the same is true for many of, our, of your professors, administrators, and the staff who've supported you during your time in law school. I do the work that I do, we do the work that we do so that society can benefit from your minds and from your commitment to bettering our profession. Now as you leave us to begin your careers as complete lawyers, I trust that you will take on this new responsibility, drawing inspiration from the Jesuits and the Sisters of Mercy who call on us all to care for each other. I've seen you do this in so many ways during your time here at the law school. It's been my honor to be a part of your journey. So since I'm in my last few weeks as dean, a few of you have told me that I can be an honorary member of the class of 2024, and so I accept. As you step out of the halls of Detroit Mercy Law, I'm doing the same. And like you, I have been shaped by our school for the better. As we launch out on our new adventures, please hold on to your whys, and I will hold on to mine as we go along our way. I will be rooting for each of you always. I can't wait to hear about the wonderful things that you'll do with your career, the way that you'll use your law degrees to advance justice, serve our profession, and make Detroit Mercy Law proud. Best wishes to each of you. Thank you for the many ways you've inspired me and added to our law school community. And to us, the class of 2024, a very sincere well done and congratulations. Thank you, Dean Jefferson Exum. It's now my privilege to present the president of the University of Detroit Mercy, Dr. Donald B. Taylor. Students, alumni, faculty, staff, trustees, deans, families, friends, and honored guests. Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Pamela Zarkowski, good afternoon and welcome to the 2024 commencement exercises at University of Detroit Mercy. It is truly my honor to present this afternoon the class of 2024. In addition to the commencement activities this weekend, this is also a special weekend being Mother's Day weekend. So again, all the moms here, happy Mother's Day. I want to take a moment to honor those of you joining us today in person or virtually in celebration. As every member of the class of 2024 knows, the road to this milestone has not been traveled alone. 
The service and support of family and close friends have been invaluable in achieving this dream. At this time, I ask family, friends, and anyone who has played a role to support these law school titans. Please stand so we can recognize your efforts. Families. I also want to recognize the members of the class of 2024 who are the first in their family to earn a college degree. So if you're a first generation student, please stand and be recognized. I know your story. I was once in your place I was the first person in my family to even attend college, let alone graduate. You are an example for others in your family and community to follow the path of education because you never know where you might go and where you might lead others. Be proud and give back by helping others know and understand your accomplishments. Our mission says we integrate the intellectual, spiritual, ethical, and social development of our students. We see that in so many of you. You've weathered tough class projects, demanding professors, the stress of balancing work and life and class, but you didn't let any of that deter you from your ultimate goals. You even lived through the pandemic when it seemed the world might never be the same. Indeed, some of you suffered losses that changed your lives, but you fought and you studied and you worked and you learned and you're leaving this institution a fuller person, a stronger person, one who knows what you want and how to get it. You have a resilience based on the mercy and the Jesuit ideals and values that will get you through anything that comes your way. Your entire Detroit Mercy experience has been building to today's moment. The degrees awarded today are more than your entry into a career. They are a ticket to a new world, one you will make in your field and your career. The charisms of our founding sponsors, the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, and the Religious Sisters of Mercy fit so beautifully together because St. Ignatius and Catherine Macaulay, who lived centuries apart, different parts of the world, understood the value of learning and of God's place in the world. Mother Catherine Macaulay said, we should be as shining lamps, giving light to all. And St. Ignatius said, go forth, and set the world on fire. These are not mere words. These are challenges you should carry in your hearts and strive to achieve. After the events, both small and large, of the last four years, you should know that you can rise to that challenge. We know you can do it because we see you doing it every day on the law school campus for our community and in your field. It's time to shine. Graduates, as you embark on this next phase of your journey, know that you are the light by which others will see. This celebration is the culmination of years of hard work, but it's also a new beginning. Whether you're continuing your academic journey, starting a career in a chosen field, advancing in your profession, or taking on a new profession, it's a magical time for each of you. Each of you is on the verge of your future. Each of you is empowered with the tools for success. The possibilities are endless. And remember, you are a titan, and the world needs titans more than ever. And finally, my message to you in the words of the great philosopher, Mr. Spock from Star Trek, may you live long and prosper. God bless. Congratulations, class of 2024. Go get them. Dr. Taylor, and now I'm honored to introduce our commencement speaker, the Honorable Victoria A. Roberts. Judge Roberts is a past president of the State Bar of Michigan and served as a federal district judge for the Eastern District of Michigan for 25 years before she retired in September of 2023. Judge Roberts received her Juris Doctor in 1976 
from Northeastern University School of Law. Her undergraduate degree in journalism and sociology is from the University of Michigan. Judge Roberts is recognized as an international teacher and lecturer on behalf of the Federal Judicial Center, the State Department, and the Department of Justice. I've been inspired by Judge Roberts since I first read her insightful sentencing decisions when I was just starting as a sentencing scholar. But I'm far from the only one who has recognized Judge Roberts' brilliance and commitment to justice. Judge Roberts is the recipient of numerous awards, including the two highest conferred by the State Bar of Michigan. Judge Roberts received an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws from Northeastern University. She was named Michigan's Law Michigan Lawyers Weekly Woman of the Year in 2013 and received the Detroit Metropolitan Bar Association Foundation Dennis W. Archer Public Service Award in 2012. In 1997, she was named one of the Lawyers of the Year by Michigan Lawyers Weekly. In 2023, the ACLU of Michigan honored her for her leg legacy of mentorship and service on the bench. Also in 2023, the American Board of Trial Advocates bestowed on her its Lifetime Judicial Achievement Award. In 2024, the Michigan Chronicle honored her as one of its Women of Excellence. Judge Roberts has had an incredibly exciting and impactful career. On the bench, Judge Roberts served on various committees and was chief mediator in the City of Detroit bankruptcy case. She has served on boards of several organizations, including Big Brothers Big Sisters, the Fair Housing Center of Metropolitan Detroit, St. Leo's Soup Kitchen, and the State Bar of Michigan Foundation. Judge Roberts' great impact has also been felt at Detroit Mercy Law. She's been a leader in the Wolverine Bar Association Judicial Externship Program that has supported many of our students. While on the bench, she proposed and implemented the operation of the Pro Se Legal Assistance Clinic that works in conjunction with Detroit Mercy Law. She has also been a valuable member of the Dean Advisory Board at our law school. We've been fortunate to have her support of our school. I've been fortunate to count her as a mentor and a great example of how to use one's legal career to make a meaningful difference in society and in the profession. Please join me in welcoming Judge Victoria A. Roberts. Good afternoon, everyone. That was pretty weak. Good afternoon, everyone. I am humbled by this invitation and deeply grateful. Thank you, Dean Jefferson and Dr. Taylor and the entire University of Detroit Mercy family. And congratulations to the soon-to-be lawyers. My name is Victoria Roberts. I am retired from the United States District Court in the Dis Eastern District of Michigan after 25 years of service. If someone had told me as I took law school classes and prepared to graduate in 1976, that my career as a lawyer would take me to a place where at full throttle, less than 700 lawyers nationwide have the honor and privilege to hold a federal trial judge position, I would have dismissed the notion entirely particularly since I was totally intimidated by my law school peers and professors. And that is my starting point today, that all things are possible with faith, and that you graduates are destined for greatness and a phenomenal life. For most of my adult life, I was a runner. I did my fair share of 5Ks and 10Ks and half marathons. In 2005, I asked my sister, who would turn 50 that year, if she wanted to run the Detroit International Marathon to celebrate that landmark birthday. And she said yes. We embarked on an 18-week training program. And to begin the program, we needed to efficiently run six miles at a stretch several times a week. Suddenly, in the midst of our training, on April 1, 2005, one of our other sisters died. And she was only 57 years old. I had last seen her only two days before her death. After Pat died, try as I might, I could barely put one foot in front of the other. 
I was devastated by her death. My marathon story and my life and career is a story of faith, of guardian angels, of the power of belief in a dream. Henry David Thoreau wrote, if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to, be, to live the life that he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. Your UDM Law School education has certainly given you that foundation that Thoreau wrote of. In legal theory and the practice of law, infused with a mindset of public service, what a solid amalgamation, what a place and space to let the dreams begin. You have worked long and hard for this day. Many of you have known that you wanted to be lawyers from a young age perhaps following in the footsteps of parents or siblings. Others of you may have decided later in life that the law is a noble calling and you are here at UDM precisely because it trains lawyers dedicated to social justice. Maybe some of you are like me. My parents were blue collar workers. They migrated from the South. They did not finish high school. There were no lawyers in my background. I never met a lawyer until I started law school. My role models were the nuns at the Catholic schools that I attended, and I wanted to be a nun. I could not see a world of other possibilities because my world was so limited. And that changed in college. I intended to pursue a career in journalism. And to my disappointment, that got derailed that I applied to law school when I was well into my senior year. But let me get back to my marathon story. I sat at my desk in chambers and a triathlon law clerk working for another judge visited me. Michael said he heard that I was planning to run the marathon. I told him I was not, that my breath and drive and passion for the marathon withered with my sister's death. He offered to train with me. I declined. He persisted. And I finally accepted his, over, his offer. Over the summer, we met regularly. And I made up the training ground that I had lost. His next act of kindness was to tell me that he would meet me at mile 14 and run the second half of the marathon with me. And sure enough, he showed up. And for 12 miles, we ran uneventfully. At mile 26, I developed an excruciating cramp in one leg that brought me to my knees. Medics came quickly with a stretcher. Michael waved them off. He said, get away from her. And he looked down at me, and he was still yelling. And he said, I did not train you to end up this way. Get up now. So I got up. Mile 26 for me was a mixed bag of hobbling and limping, but I finished the race. 17 years later, in April of 2022, I witnessed my daughter run and finish the Boston Marathon. At mile three, she was all smiles. At mile 15, she still looked good. Smile was not so bright. At mile 26, I saw that all too familiar look of anticipation, of glee, of exhaustion, some pain, but also the eyes of a victory pursued relentlessly. And with that last foot crossing the finish line, my daughter, too, joined the club of 0.01% of the world's population who has completed a marathon. Faith and a dream fulfilled. For a moment, all of you, I would just ask you to close your eyes. Everyone, just close your eyes. Everyone, for a moment. And just remember a moment like my marathon moment. 
when you were brought to your knees, literally or figuratively. And you, if you haven't had such a moment yet, trust me, because it's coming. Now open your eyes. All of the details of how you ended up on your knees may escape you. But the truth is, you got up, and you survived, and you are here now, and you are better for it. There are lessons to learn from every single one of your experiences. Be thankful even for the difficult times, because that is where your true strength will shine. My friend in 2005 knew better than I did that I had to finish that race. Too much investment of time and energy for me to not to get up on my feet and limp to the finish line. So much of what you will do over the course of your legal careers may look and feel like my marathon race. It is training, it is practice, it is limping, it's failing and getting back up. Learning from mistakes and leaning on guardian angels and the kindness of strangers. It's luck and it is the intersection of that luck and your training. UDM prepared you well for the race. You don't know today as you sit here what year three of your practice will look like or year 15 or year 26. You may not know yet what you want to be when you grow up, and that's okay. Just try to do what you love, act always with integrity, and remember the lessons of this law school, and you will serve a higher purpose. You are well prepared for your journey, and it should rarely be a solo one. Always surround yourselves with people who have faith in you and in whom you have faith and who will tell you to get up now. Young lawyers fall into the trap of sequestering themselves in offices and books because they believe they should know so much more than they feel they do. They get intimidated by partners and bosses and judges don't fall into the trap. It is called the practice of law for a reason. You will get better over time, and you will polish your skills. And yes, there will always be greater and lesser lawyers than you. Be kind to yourselves and nurture your spirits. Know that the world will unfold as it should, even when things make no sense to you. And that is what faith is. On a visit with my grandkids two years ago, we baked sweet potato muffins. And as I pulled the muffins from the oven, I said, perfect. I said, perfect. And the youngest one, who was only four years old at the time, said, quote, nothing is perfect, Grandma, not even you. And she is right. Nothing is perfect. The burden of striving for it can be overwhelming, so don't make it a goal. At the end of many days, I simply ask myself, did I do the best I could? If I can say yes to that, then I have met with success on that day. What success is can change from moment to moment, and a dose of humbleness is always, always will serve you well in your legal career, and in your entire lives. This commencement, this beginning, is simply one of many that you will experience over the course of your careers, sometimes over the course of a day. Often, I think of how running is a perfect metaphor for life, for projects, for the course of careers. It is a test of will, it is a test of resilience and endurance and patience and striving to improve. It is getting passed by others along the trail who go on to win the race. It's sacrifice, and it starts with tying your shoes. 
It's putting your heart and soul and feet and spirit into it. It's tentative. Your strides get stronger. It's being tired, but running anyway. It's accepting the challenge and taking the risk, because you must. Sometimes at a fast pace, sometimes barely moving, but edging to the finish line, whatever and wherever that is. And yesterday's race is just that, it's finished. And with some rest and restoration, you are ready to race again. The practice of law is not any different. Today is not the celebration of an ending, it celebrates a new beginning, a new chapter of life. We all believe in you and how you can change the world. My last career law clerk, a Northeastern law grad, said that Northeastern prepares students for postgraduate legal work as well as any school in the country, including the Ivy Leaguers. I have had UDM law grads as clerks and as interns, and I would say the same about you and your preparation and your readiness. My record of hiring UDM students and graduates and recommending an overwhelming number of you to participate in the Wolverine Bar JEP program demonstrates my respect for and belief in the education that you received. My son, who is almost 39 years old with Down syndrome, has participated in almost every special track and field, special Olympics track and field event there is since he was six years old. The Special Olympics motto is, let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. The translation, be fearless, be bold, be audacious, be undaunted, take risk, be excellent, have moral strength and endurance, be resilient, rise up. Because it is not always the victory, it's the fight, despite challenges which may seem insurmountable. Don't let the challenges of practicing law ever defeat you. And this is what we want from you, a chance to be brave and to pursue a dream, to explore the possibilities. Give yourselves permission, live your life and no one else's, Follow your hearts, follow your voices. History tells us that you will only be limited by your own imaginations. Think of how lawyers change the world. We need look no farther than the recent Dobbs decision and the more recent Harvard case involving affirmative action. Regardless of where you are, on the issues of abortion and affirmative action. Lawyers on both sides of these debates were poised for years to argue the earlier decisions and poised again to be in this moment to argue these cases that changed our country and decades of jurisprudence. Judges, former lawyers, made these life-changing decisions. Lawyers are change agents. Think of the world that is open to you from this launch pad of the University of Detroit Mercy. The school has prepared you to be on the world stage. The opportunities that you will have to make a difference, to reimagine this world that you have inherited, to lift people through your own strong and socially conscious hearts and spirits are endless. Never doubt your capacity. Mistakes and falling down are inevitable, and so are the victories. So stay in the race as I did. Regret only forces you to look back, but faith looks up, and I ask you to always keep the faith. Be bold and courageous. Appreciate that every moment presents a new opportunity and a new beginning. 
Accept the kindness of strangers and be kind to them. We look forward to a world of your imaginations, of your creation. So I ask you now, graduates, get up. Get up. Get up. Stand up. As I did in that marathon, in that marathon for life, get up now and let your dreams begin. Congratulations. Detroit Mercy Law community, thank you for being our commencement speaker for the 2024 graduation for Detroit Mercy Law. Your words and your service inspire us all. Candidates for the Juris Doctor degree, please stand. The candidates are presented by Dean Jefferson Exum. Dr. Taylor, on behalf of the faculty of the School of Law, I present these candidates for the de degree of Juris Doctor and respectfully recommend that this degree be confirmed on them. Candidates, please proceed to this stage to receive your academic hoods from the faculty and alumni of the School of Law and your diplomas from the president of the university. The candidates' names will be read by Professor Richard Broughton. As I read the names of our candidates, please hold your applause so that each candidate can be fully recognized. Thank you. Angelina Abu Farha. Zarina Mackenzie Albanese. Edwin Lee Almanza. Simon F. Almajar, cum laude. Rosanna Lynn Amerigian, cum laude, who will be hooded by the Honorable Lisa Azadorian, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate.
Marissa Azrula, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kyle Michael Atisha, cum laude. Nicholas W. Auger, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Anthony Bobby, cum laude. Sammy Nicholas Borden Sanford, also a candidate for the Master of Business Administration degree from the University of Detroit Mercy. Alexa Cheyenne Brady. Anastasia Branopolsky, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Guy Brenner, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Dylan J. Bressler, cum laude. Erica Joanne Rico. Miguel Nazar Brico, cum laude. Sean Elliott Broderick, cum laude. Alexandra Brown, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Alexis Chanel Brown. John Patrick Cronin, summa cum laude.
Jamar W. Cunningham, who will be hooded by Brandon Wilson, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Rupa Lavanya Bandi, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Malak Bazi. Kevin B. Joy, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Andrew Lawrence Belford, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Taylor Nicole Bell. Kaylee Elizabeth Bennett, cum laude, who will be hooded by the Honorable Michael J. Nolan, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Mohammed Kassem Beydoun. Leah Buchanan, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. John Caretti, the second. Richard John Caretti, the second. Bianca Marie Carrera, cum laude. Skyler B. Carlson. Nicholas John Carroll, who will, who will be hooded by Christopher Tower, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Grace Ann Karuba, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Joel S. Chekanko.
Sophia Raquel Kali Aquino. Cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Troy Nicholas Bacchus, magna cum laude. Peter Baclorian, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Gregory A. Dallas. Michaela Shea Dalrymple, cum laude. Anna Shukri David. Cassandra Maria DeMarco, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Jessica Victoria DeForest, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kristen Mary DuBerry, who will be hooded by Paul Doherty, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Manpreet Dhaliwal, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Manraj Dhaliwal. Jansen Fu, magna cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Elizabeth Ann Durker, who will be hooded by Joseph Durker, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Olivia Ryan De La Haye. Cum laude, who will be hooded, hooded by Joshua Wilk, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Erica DiLoretto, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Alexis 
Mercedes De Pasquale Kakish. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Jenna N. Elder. Sarah El Sayed. Medina El Zayat, who will be hooded by Zena El Hassan, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Barbara Fama. Andrew Michael Foley. Also a candidate for the Master of Business Administration degree from the University of Detroit Mercy. Candace Renee Andrea Forbes. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Matthew Robert Fergelli. Summa cum laude. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Daniel Pierce Gallet, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Evelyn Gadira Galvan, magna cum laude. Amanda Marie Gardner, cum laude. Jacqueline Ashley Gelfenbein, cum laude. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Andrew Edward Ghanam. Lauren Elizabeth Giais, magna cum laude. Julia Madeline Harnadek, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Hassan A. Harp, cum laude.
So Young Kim, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Craig Kantadong, Kendry Gross. Cum Laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Catherine Renata Kobalak, cum laude, who will be hooded by Kurt Kobalak, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Victoria Ann Giuliani, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Reagan Lexi Glenn, magna cum laude. Angela Lillian Gray, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Alyssa Page Grondon, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Ala Heiji, being hooded by Ren Hamdar a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Blake Reuben George Hamley, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Adam S. Hamid, who will be hooded by Saif Hadar, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Tiffany J. Harvey. Kayla Peck, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kamiya Hidari, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Riley Elizabeth Heritage, cum laude. Jasmine Anise Hester, cum laude. Michelle Riley Hudson. Malika Pervez, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kara Lynn Kessler.
hezký. Michael Richard Kester, magna cum laude. Rita Bashir Kuzi, magna cum laude will be hooded by Sandra Cousy, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Jensen Stephen Porter McCauley, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Sydney Leah Williams. Olivia Mihalowski. Janine M. Elian, who will be hooded by Maya Eunice, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Alexandra Zeman Ng, magna cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Simran Singh Jabal, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Sydney Marie Jackson, cum laude, who will be hooded by Brandon Wilson, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Mika Gabriella Carlin, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Lisa Kazimi, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Brendan J. Kennedy, cum laude. Theodore John Calthan, Jr. Jayton Kubar, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Ryan M. Langston, cum laude.
Matthew Robert Lippa. Magna Cum Laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Emily Yoon Ying Luam, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kevin McMahon Lynch, magna cum laude, who will be hooded by Terrence Lynch, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Alicia Maria Mashenko, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Michael Joseph Mojica. Yasmin Morachahi, cum laude. <laughs> Teresa Georgia Naiman, cum laude. by Rachel Lewandusky and Ryan Kelly, both Detroit Mercy Law graduates. <laughs> Athanasia Thalia Petsis, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Ray Petzel, magna cum laude. Julia Pilateri, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Maria Lynn. Neil Matthias Matta. Magna Cum Laude. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Anthony Edward Marini, who will be hooded by Matthew Sakem, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Masri Zara, who will be hooded by the Honorable Victoria A. Roberts. Casey 
Jane Matson, cum laude. Ariana Gabrielle Meyer, magna cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Kristen Victoria Nelson, cum laude. Elizabeth Reed Nichols, cum laude, who will be hooded by Christopher Tower, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Kira Marie Nielsen, cum laude. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Davina Nikai. Allison R. Norton. Sandra Naomi Pitu, magna cum laude. Marissa C. Pletcher, cum laude. Alexis Victoria Pozaks. Savannah Marie Polomini, magna cum laude. Zara Ashraf Kazi. Christopher J. Saleh, cum laude. Amy Fadi Sadi, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Erica Marie Scarpelli, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Morgan Ashley Shaneth, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Khadija Omar, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor.
Rami Oro. Aubrey Grace Ortel. Kristen Marie Page, cum laude. Satna Subodh Patel. Connor Fitzpatrick Pearson, cum laude. Ashiana Raja, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Anmol Kaur Rana, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Show. Magna Cum Laude. Dolores L. Retland. Nathan Allen Robbins, cum laude. Alexander Raymond Schramm, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Alexander J. Schultz, cum laude. Lindsay Renee Schultz, cum laude. Fatime Sharifi Al Yayi, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Eden Yusuf Shikwana. Janaya Reagan Thompson, cum laude. Matthew T. Toma, also a candidate for the Master of Business Administration degree from the University of Detroit Mercy. Tina T. Toma, 
Magna Cum Laude. Gennar Veronica Tapuzian. Cum Laude. Monica Sakura Roberts. Summa Cum Laude. Joseph Claude Romain. Cum Laude. Sam Imad Rufael, who will be hooded by Stephanie Hanna, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Robert J. Ryder, who will be hooded by Gary Priestap, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Elizabeth Sarah Sahuri. Nivedita Sandeep Singh Saini. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Renato Joseph Sordi, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Brett M. Spencer, magna cum laude, who will be hooded by Christos Skrubakos, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Connor James Stork. Kristen Simmons Trogan, cum laude. Alexia Zinia Vujaklakis. Max Waldman. Khalil Antonio James Walton. Caroline Cecilia Ward. Also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Shay McKenna Ward, cum laude. Win Braden Wasmer.
Anastasia Simone Elizabeth Worthy. Sapir Yusuf Poor. Cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Robert A. Zink III. Tara Lynn Zarebski. Magna Cum Laude who will be hooded by Christos Strabakos, a Detroit Mercy Law graduate. Daniel Kenneth Zittner, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Shelby Olivia Struble, magna cum laude. Rula M. Suleiman. Christina Shaw Sutro, magna cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Samantha E. Talieri, magna cum laude. Malak Tehali, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Colleen Antoinette Williams, cum laude, also a candidate for the Juris Doctor degree from the University of Windsor. Joseph David DiMartini Williams, also a candidate for the Master of Business Administration degree from the University of Detroit Mercy. Messiah A. A. Williams. Emily Marsden Wilts, cum laude. Marissa Shea Woods. Candidates for the Juris Doctor degree, please stand.
By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon you the degree of Juris Doctor and now pronounce you sons and daughters of the University of Detroit Mercy Forever, class of 2024. Congratulations to all of our graduates. You may be seated. In just a moment, President Taylor will present the Student Mission Leadership Award, the Viviere Ex Missione Award, which means to live the mission, is presented to, grad to students who go beyond their academic and program requirements to live out the mission of Detroit Mercy. Every year, members of the university community are invited to recommend graduating students who exemplify the mission of the university and demonstrate the following core values. Education of the whole person, service that leads to justice, recognition of the sacred in all, and building a community of inclusivity. The students embody what St. Ignatius dedicated or described as love shown more in deeds than words. A mission lamp is presented to the winners of the Riviere Ex Missione Award to honor students who have fulfilled the call of Catherine McCauley, founder of the Sisters of Mercy, who said, we should be shining lamps, giving light to all around us. Missione Award goes to Evelyn Y. Galvan. Evelyn came to Detroit Mercy Law with a passion to help immigrants, minorities, the poor, and other communities often denied access to legal help. A standout in the classroom and through her editorial work on the Detroit Mercy Law Review, this first-generation college student honors the commitment that brought her to study law every day. Through the criminal trial clinic and expungement work, Evelyn helped represent Spanish-speaking clients, she also participates in the Ends of Court, an organization that seeks to promote ethics and professionalism in the law. She serves as a research assistant in criminal law, guiding first-year students through the complexities of learning the law. She also worked on the Moot Court Board of Advocates, developing her intellectual and professional skills and using them for the betterment of the profession and the community. Under her leadership, the Hispanic and Latinx Law Students Association has thrived, and she leaves behind an organization committed to helping address underrepresentation of Latinx students at Detroit Mercy Law. We know she will bring the same passion to her position at DICOMA in Detroit. For these and so many other reasons, University of Detroit Mercy is proud to name Evelyn Y. Gavon as this year's Vivere Ex Missione honoree for the School of Law. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Taylor, and congratulations, Evelyn. Each year, the graduating class selects a student to lead the University of Detroit Mercy School of Law graduates in the prayer inspired by St. Thomas More. This year, the class of 2024 has selected Regan Glenn. Graduates, you'll find this prayer in the scroll you've just received. Please stand.
My fellow graduates, let us recite together the St. Thomas More Prayer. Please repeat after me. Lord, grant that I may be able in argument, accurate in analysis, strict in study, candid with clients, and honest with adversaries. Sit with me at my desk and listen with me to my client's plaints. Read with me in my library and stand beside me in court so that today I shall not, in order to win a point, lose my soul. Amen. Thank you and congratulations. Graduates, please be seated. Each year, the graduating class selects a student to deliver remarks on behalf of the class. This year, the class of 2024 has selected Kristen Dewberry. Good afternoon, family, friends, deans, faculty and staff, and most importantly today, Detroit Mercy School of Law, class of 2024. I don't think that was loud enough. I said Detroit Mercy School of Law, class of 2024. Better. First, I want to thank my classmates for nominating and voting me to speak on our behalf and to our families on behalf of our class. Thank you. Not just for joining in the celebration of this monumental moment in our lives, one of many more to come, but for your love, support, encouragement, and above all, your understanding. Thank you for understanding our analytical minds have been awakened and we can't turn them off. So yes, every movie we watch or story you tell us, we will analyze the facts to determine the viability of your claim. One of the many perks of law school. Thank you for understanding we could not attend your event because we had 100 pages of constitutional law to read. Thank you, Professor McLeod. <laughs> and a very special thank you to my dad for listening to fact patterns and speeches that put you to sleep and for dealing with my attitude during finals. I'm sure the loved ones in this room could share horror stories about their law student during final season, but we won't talk about that this evening. Yes, we did all the reading, writing, research, and testing, and yes, L. Woods, it was actually hard, but we could not have made it through this journey without you by our side. Graduates, I ask you to please stand and thank your loved ones for being here. Give them a round of applause. Whether they are here in spirit or in flesh, their support deserves a standing ovation. And while you all are feeling good about our appreciation, we have one more small request. Please continue showering us with your love. Oh, you guys can sit down. <laughs> Please continue showering us with your love, support, meals, and money over the next few weeks as we gear up to start the bar, to take the bar exam and to start our new careers. Thank you in advance. To my class, I wanted to share something with you you could carry through your bar studies into practice. I thought, what could I tell these beautiful, intelligent minds that they haven't heard a million times before? I could say our deepest fear is that we are inadequate, except that's not our fear. Law school has taught us that confidence is key, so fake it till you make it. I came across the poem Thinking by Walter Wentzel, and I thought this is it. This is what the journey to JD has been like. Graduates, I ask you to rewind back to September 2021. We just spent weeks learning civil procedure, we taken our first quiz, and we're patiently awaiting Professor Richards and Dean Henning to give us the A's and B's we were used to. Now, some of us did get those A's and B's, but I think I speak for most of us when I say the grades we received were not the A's, B's, or C's that we were used to. The doubt immediately rushed into our mind. Is this my quiz? Did she grade it right? Was the curve applied? The poem begins with, if you think you are broken, you are. 
We questioned if we were in the right place and if we should continue, but we did. We adapted, attended office hours and TA sessions, and did better than before. The poet goes on to say, for out of the world we will find success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in the state of mind. Walking in our second year, we had transformed from flustered and confused 1Ls to seasoned and confused 2Ls. Another year of learning and being humbled, but at least we had understood what we were reading this time. We took on leadership positions with organizations, competed in moot court competitions, and worked on law review articles. The poem continues with, you've got to think high to rise, you've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win the prize. Walking in as 3Ls, we morphed into pillars of the school. We finally made it to the presidential suite. We knew how everything worked. We knew we had to be 45 minutes early to our exam or James would give us a hard time. We knew Professor Broughton would be, well, Professor Broughton, consistent. We'd adjusted our minds for our exit. The poem concludes with, life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man, but sooner or later, the person who wins is the person who can prepare. Law school was not easy. However, it was the start of a new chapter in our lives. We encountered many lessons, built unbreakable bonds, and learned to be the complete lawyer. We fought 100 battles, and we will fight 100 more. But as you fight, I ask you to remember three things. One, everything that is meant for you will always be for you. Nobody can take it away. Two, one closed door is an opportunity for a bigger door to open. Trust the process. And three, the battles we fought couldn't break us because they are a representation of all that we are capable of. Never sell yourself short. On Monday, many of us will begin Many of us will begin preparing for the biggest exam of our lives. And to that I say to each of you, in the words of Kobe Bryant, despite the fear, finish the job. But for today and the rest of this weekend, celebrate that, you've completed, that we've completed our journey to JD. It should come as no surprise that I leave you with a quote from Elle Woods, congratulations class of 2024, we did it. Thank you so much, Kristen. I now invite Kyle Dufresne, class of 1998 and president of the School of Law's Alumni Association, to welcome today's graduates as alumni of the School of Law and the University of Detroit Mercy. So before I get to my prepared remarks, I will say that uh, when you go last at one of these things, uh, you sort of mentally take off in your head everything you've heard from all the other speakers and you realize you have nothing left to say that won't be a repeat. Um, but I'm gonna give it my best. So, Dr. Taylor, Dean Jefferson Exum, Judge Roberts, faculty, staff, friends, family and graduates. As the current president of the Detroit, Lum Detroit Mercy Law Alumni Association, I have just a few remarks knowing that I'm the one standing between you and whatever celebration you all have planned for tonight. I am delighted to have this opportunity to speak to you, though, uh, to the class of 2024, the 110th in the history of this great law school. Today is a great occasion for me, uh, as it is for you and your families and those who have supported you to get where you are today. I am a proud first-gen graduate, both undergrad and law, um, from the Detroit Mercy class of 1998. I graduated 26 years ago on Mother's Day from the Detroit Opera House. And I look back on that day as one of my fondest memories. And your time at Detroit Mercy will prove fruitful for you over the next 30, 40, even 50 years. You've been given an excellent foundation by a strong faculty and a school with an excellent tradition. For more than a century, Detroit Mercy Law graduates have achieved success as attorneys, political leaders, judges, prosecutors, corporate executives, and in other capacities. It's an extensive network. Use it. You've been blessed by the opportunities and education you've received at Detroit Mercy Law and you've earned the right to call yourself a Detroit Mercy lawyer. But with that right comes responsibility. You have a responsibility to give back to your community, to the friends and family that helped you get to this point, and of course, this law school. 
I urge you to contribute to the law school in some way to further the school's mission. Now you're probably thinking this is the most expensive under endeavor you've ever undertaken. I'm telling you though, this investment in yourself and your career is the best one that you have made to date. When I went to law school though those many years ago, I thought, how am I ever gonna afford this or one day pay it back? Instead, it turned out that I couldn't imagine the returns I received because of attending Detroit Mercy Law. Among other things, your law degree is an asset. And with your assistance, we can all enhance this asset and the law school in general. For the rest of your life, you will be representing Detroit Mercy Law in all your professional endeavors. Of course, this representation starts with bar exam preparation, as you just heard. And for those of you fortunate enough not to work between now and taking the bar, preparing for the bar is your job. Nine to five, Monday through Friday, do it. For those of you who are working, consider yourself to have two occupations between now and the bar exam. In your personal and professional lives, you'll forever be a reflection of Detroit Mercy Law and the value and work ethic developed during your legal education here. So I have a little free advice for you. Number one, never be on time. Be early. Complete tasks prior to the assigned deadline. Two, never perform any task without doing it to the maximum of your ability. Start with an objective and more than fulfill it. And three, finally, conduct yourself with dignity in class, like you heard in the prayer. Display to the world at large that Detroit Mercy Law graduates possess the competence, intellectual honesty, compassion, and perseverance necessary to obtain positive results for society at large and for your clients and employers specifically. You will be successful, however it is you define that term if you fully utilize the skills that you have developed over the last three years and employ those skills in the service of others. And finally, one thing I wish I could still do is to thank my parents together for all that they did for me. So please, thank your parents. Hopefully they're here with you today. Thank your significant others and all those who have supported you on this journey. I implore you, don't forget where you come from, wherever it is you may go. Don't forget your foundation. The Detroit Mercy Law Alumni Association is here for you. Professors and deans may come and go, sadly, but the institution itself remains. Rely on the school, give back to the school, and you won't regret it. I know what you're thinking to yourselves, you must be wrapping up, right? Well, but wait, there's more. Um, you may have noticed a bag under your seats when you processed in. Those are gift bags from alumni relations welcoming you into the fold. Please take them with you as you process out. And thank you again very much for allowing me some time on this special day for all of you. Welcome to the Alumni Association. Congratulations again and God bless. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you all for celebrating the class of 2024 with us. This concludes the 2024 University of Detroit Mercy School of Law commencement ceremony. The recessional will be led by the president, the dean of the School of Law, trustees and vice presidents of the university, and our distinguished alumni. The faculty and administration of the School of Law are asked to follow. 2024 graduates, please follow the faculty marshals. For everyone else, Please remain seated until the graduates leave Callahan Hall. Thank you and bless you.